Good morning from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is Space Shuttle Columbia Launch Control. Our countdown for launch of Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-107 is continuing on schedule this morning. Launch remains scheduled to occur at 10.39 a.m. Eastern Time and our launch opportunity window extends for about two hours and 30 minutes. This is a 16-day science mission. It's dedicated to various competitively selected and commercially sponsored experiments in space, life, and physical sciences. We have an international crew of seven on board, including the first Israeli astronaut. The astronauts will be working 24 hours a day in two alternating shifts to carry out experiments in the areas of astronaut health and safety, advanced technology development, and Earth and space sciences. This mission will give more than 70 international scientists access to both microgravity environment of space and a set of seven researchers for the full 16 days in orbit. And we have our seven astronauts uh, seated at breakfast. Ilan um, Ramon is there. He is the uh, representative from the Israel Space Agency, a first time flyer, as well as uh, David Brown. William McCool, who will be our pilot on this mission, and our commander for this flight is Rick Husband, Laurel Clark, one of the two females on this mission, Mike Anderson, and of course uh, Kopna Chavla, rounding out the seven member crew. This again was taken at about 6 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time, at the crew quarters. Astronauts have uh, been awakened at different times. They're on two separate shifts on this mission uh, to cover the 24 hours that we'll be doing scientific research. Crew members are, of course, in their suit-up room. Uh, first one is uh, Rick Husband, who is, of course, the commander of this flight on his second flight. He was uh, selected as an astronaut back in 1994. He flew on STS-96 in 1999, spent 235 hours in space. William, or Willie McCool, is our pilot on his first flight. He was selected by NASA as an astronaut in 1996, and on this mission, he'll be responsible for maneuvering Columbia as part of several experiments mounted in the shuttle's payload bay. Mike Anderson. He's the payload commander as well as mission specialist on this mission. This is his second flight. He first became an astronaut back in 1994. His first flight was STS-89 to the Mir space station. Laurel Clark, mission specialist on her first flight. She too became an astronaut back in 1996. Her first assignment was to work in the astronaut office payloads and habitability branch. David Brown, mission specialist, his first flight. He was initially assigned to support the payload development for the International Space Station. Kopna Chavla, mission specialist, and she'll be the, she was the prime robotic arm operator on STS-97, or excuse me, STS-87 back in 1997. This is her second flight. And Ilan Ramon, colonel in the Israeli Air Force. He's the prime crew member for the Mediterranean Israeli dust experiment. This is a crew coming out of their crew quarters uh, as a unit on the third floor of the operations and checkout building. All of our astronauts, of course, are uh, now suited 
and they are getting onto the elevator that will take them down to the uh, ground floor and to the astronaut van, which is waiting for them. And our astronauts coming out now as they are making their way to the astronaut van. Commander Rick Husband, payload spe specialist Ilan Ramon, pilot William McCool, and mission specialist Michael Anderson, David Brown, Laurel Clark, and Colt Nachapa. And the NASA test director, Jeff Spalding, has given approval for the crew to begin entry into the vehicle. Again, the seven-member flight crew uh, ha have arrived at the pad, and they are now in the process of entering the vehicle to occupy their assigned seats. Commander Rick Husband, the first to enter the orbiter, as is the tradition and the custom for the shuttle commander. And he will then be followed by his fellow crew members, each taking their seats in the orbiter's flight deck and on the orbiter's mid-deck. And we have a camera that is stationed in the, on the flight deck as we can watch the crew members uh, climb into the vehicle and take their seats. Of course, for the next two and a half hours uh, prior to the opening of the window, uh, once they're in their seats, they will be basically laying on their backs in a uh, prone position. And you can see a husband climbing in uh, somewhat difficult, uh, cramped quarters there. Uh, he has astronaut support people that are uh, assisting him, and they will continue to assist him and the other crew members until they are all completely strapped in. Uh, once they are strapped in, uh, they will do uh, voice checks. In fact, uh, once uh, they are uh, hooked up to the comm system, they will begin those voice checks uh, with uh, ground controllers here at Kennedy Space Center as well as mission controllers at Johnson Space Center. And next to enter the vehicle will be uh, the astronaut representing uh, the Israel Space Agency, Ilan Ramon. Ramon is a colonel in the Israeli Air Force. He received a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Tel Aviv in 1987. Ramon, Ramon will be situated and seated on the mid-deck. Uh, three of our astronauts will be on the mid-deck, and four will be on the flight deck. Uh, back in 1997, the Israeli Air Force selected um, Ramon as a payload specialist, and then in 1998, he reported for his first training at the Johnson Space Center. He is the prime crew member for the Mediterranean-Israeli Dust Experiment, or MEDEX, a multispectral camera that will measure small dust particles in the atmosphere over the Mediterranean and the Saharan coast of the Atlantic. He'll be working with a number of other experiments, including the ESA Advanced Respiratory Monitoring System, water mist fire suppression, and structures of flame balls at low Lewis numbers experiments, as well as other experiments, including uh, physiological and biochemistry studies. OTC CDR com check. CDR OTC copy com check. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Ray. OTC, OVCC. Go. Yes, sir. PLT is aboard. Copy PLT at 1307. And with that, the pilot has now made his way through the crew hatch and is making his way up to the flight deck where he will take a seat next to the commander who is already on board and in the process of conducting voice checks. Thank you very much. Good morning, Jeff. And once the commander and the pilot are seated in the flight deck, they will again perform a variety of communications checks and uh, begin the process to 
uh, reconfigure the cockpit control switches as necessary for the final hours of today's countdown. And the other crew members are in the process of taking their turns entering the vehicle, taking their assigned seats behind the commander and the pilot on the flight deck and on the mid deck. And attention all personnel, this is the NTD conducting the launch status check. Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC, go. TBC, go. TTC, go. LPS, go. Houston flight. Houston flight is go. Myla. Myla, NTD, verify ready to resume count. And Myla ready to resume count. STM. STM is go, Jeff. Safety console. Safety's go. SPE. SPE's go. LRD. LRD go. SRO. SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch. Copy. And CDR. CDR is go. Copy. And launch director, launch team is ready to proceed. I copy. I'll perform my poll at this time. Chief Engineer, launch director, verify no constraints to launch. Engineering team is go, Mike. Thank you, Charlie. KSC safety, mission assurance. KSC SMA is go, Mike. Copy. Halo launch manager. Go. Thank you, Bill. Range weather. Weather is no constraints to launch. Copy. And ops manager. MMT is go for launch. Cover that, thank you. Columbia launch director. Go ahead. Okay, Rick, if there was ever a time to use the phrase, uh, all good things come to people who wait, this is one time. And uh, for the, you and your crew, best of luck on this mission. And from the many, many people who put this mission together, good luck and Godspeed. Oh, we appreciate it, Mike. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day here. And, uh, we're going to have a great mission. We appreciate all the great hard work everybody's put into this, and we're ready to go. Copy that. OTC, PLT, essential buses are connected to the fuel cells. Copy that. CLS is go for orbiter access arm recheck. CDR, OTC. OTC, CDR, go. Rick, from our crew to yours, best wishes on your international mission to explore the science, peace, and potential that only space travel can offer. Well, we thank you very much, uh, Ray, and uh, thanks for all the great work from uh, your team and all the other folks here. for the flight crew closed and lock your visors and initiate O2 club. T minus two minutes and counting. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 15 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. Roger roll, Columbia. Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for a 39 degree inclination to orbit. Shuttle in a heads down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. 30 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines beginning to throttle back in a three step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Columbia already two and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, four and a half miles in altitude. The main engine's beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. Columbia, you send your go at throttle up. We copy go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Husband, joined on the flight deck by pilot Willie McCool, flight engineer Colton Achavla, and mission specialist Dave Brown. Mission Specialist Laurel Clark, Payload Commander Mike Anderson, and Payload Specialist Elon Ramon seated down on the mid-deck. 
One minute, 26 seconds into the flight. Columbia 10 miles downrange, 13 miles in altitude, traveling at 1,800 miles an hour. It's away from solid rocket booster separation, everything looking good on board Columbia. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a precise target in space for main engine cutoff. Columbia now 43 miles downrange, 35 miles in altitude, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The propulsion officer and mission control reporting that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Columbia with a boost uphill for the next 90 seconds. Houston, we saw a good ohms 2 burn. No trim required. We'll meet you in the post ohms 2. And to have a sensitive moment, we would like to welcome, or we hope your wait to space was worth it, and we saw a flawless ascent and insertion for your now veteran crew of astronauts, and especially a big welcome to Elon as you join the international community of human spaceflight. Well, we thank you very much, uh, Houston, and... Uh yeah, we made sure that uh, we welcomed everybody to space, and they're all uh, doing great. Thanks a million. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at live video coming from the Space Shuttle Columbia as Columbia continues to orbit the Earth at an altitude of about 150 statute miles. The instrumentation and communications officer here in Mission Control now moving the cameras uh, to look uh, down the length of the payload bay of Columbia. crew of Columbia, those seven members continuing to go through all their uh, on-orbit configuration, getting all the systems ready for their 16-day science mission. The Freestar pallet now coming into view, six experiments on that pallet. One of those experiments is the Mediterranean-Israeli dust experiment that's going to be used to uh, measure small particles called aerosols in the atmosphere over the Mediterranean Sea as well as uh, over the Atlantic Ocean uh, just off the coast of the Sahara Desert. Also on that pallet is a space experiment module, the 14th such module, to uh, fly on the space shuttle. And that contains 11 experiments from schools and educational programs across the United States. The students developed those uh, individual experiments, went through all the work of uh, figuring out how to send them up to the space shuttle. And when they get them back, they will be doing an analysis of the results. Houston, Columbia, Tom check from the brand new RDM space tab module on air to ground one. Columbia Houston, Laura, you're loud and clear on air to ground one. We're uh, thrilled to be in this beautiful new laboratory and uh, anxious to get going on 16 days just packed full of science from many, many different disciplines. And we're thankful for all the hard work of the space tab team. And Laurel, thanks for those great words. You've got big smiles down here, and we're, we're all looking forward to working with you for those days.